Hi, in today's video I want to show you how you can use QMU as a kernel developer. But first let's talk about what is QMU. So basically QMU is an virtualizer. So you can use it for virtualizing software or running virtual machines for example. But the very cool thing about QMU is it's also an emulator. For example, if you have VirtualBox, you can only run virtual machines for x86 systems if you're on an x86 platform like a laptop or a PC with an Intel processor. But with QMU, it is pos also possible to emulate other architectures and get, for example, virtual machines with yeah, ARM architectures or OpenRISC 5 architectures up and running. In today's video, I want to show you how you can run a Linux kernel and a root file system built for ARM with QMU. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to install QMU. So here I am on Arch and on Arch the package name is QMU system ARM. This is also the package name for Ubuntu, for example. But I have already installed the package, so I can skip it for now. And now I need to download something. So we will need a root file system. Therefore, we will use BusyBox. We need to compile the Linux kernel. And we need a toolchain to build everything. So the first thing we need is we have to download a toolchain. And here I am on the ARM web page. And here I can find the cross compiler, which I can use for cross compiling ARM. So let's download the um, ARM non Linux GNU E8. BIHF compiler. Okay, this will take a few seconds. Then we will also need to download BusyBox, which we can get from here. And we also need to download a Linux kernel. And here I will go with a long term version 6.1.58 seems promising. So let's download this. Okay, so back in my terminal, in this folder, I will first extract the toolchain. This will take just a moment as it's quite a bit of files to extract. Okay, then I will extract busybox. Busybox, okay. And last but not least, let's see if the download of the kernel is already done. Yeah, it looks good, so I can also extract the kernel in here. Okay. So now let's see what we have in this folder. So we have this incredible long folder here containing our toolchain. We have busybox here and we have our Linux kernel here. And the first thing I will do is I will rename this to arm GNU toolchain to make this a little bit, this folder a little bit smaller. And in here we have a bin folder containing the compilers, we will need to compile everything. Okay, so now let's start by with compiling the Linux kernel. First, we need to configure it. Our target architecture will be ARM and our cross compiler will be ARM, GNU toolchain, bin, ARM, GNU, yeah, this one here. And I will use the default configuration for ARM based for our ARM based kernel. So this is the configuration which will be used and this is fine. And after applying the configuration, let's build it. And the build process will take several minutes. So let me pause the video here and I'm back when the kernel is compiled successfully. Okay, so the compilation has completed and if I look into Arch ARM boot, I can see here is my built kernel image or here my image and here is my compressed image. And if I take a look what file this is, yeah, data because this is a binary file, but I think that image, yeah, Linux kernel, ARM boot executable, set image, little and the end. So this is exactly what we wanted to have. Cool, so now the next step is we have to build busybox. So here it's quite similar. First I will yeah, use the default configuration here. 
Okay, and now I will use menu config to set one option manually. So here in settings, we have an option to build this as a statistic or a static binary with no shared libraries. And this is what I want to do. The reason for this is when I using the static build, I don't have to include any, yeah, any, um, yeah, shared libraries, or I have, don't have to copy any shared libraries from my cross compilers folder into my root file system. So this is why I'm doing this. And now let's build this too. Once again, here I'm assigning the numbers of available threads of my CPU, which is 12 in this case. And this should build quite quickly, but I will pause the video. Okay, so now the build is successful and we can see here all the libraries resolve is needed, can include it. Okay, let's check if we need any shared libraries for our um, busybox install. So if read elf minus lowercase d and then the binary we're interested in and then I will grab for needed. Yeah, so I don't need any shared libraries in case I would build it without the static option here. I would see all the libraries which are needed for running busybox. Cool. Good, next thing we will do is I will run install here. So it will copy everything in uh, under install folder, which we can see here. And now let's create our root file system. So we need bin folder and sbin folder, etc, proc, sys, and we need user and for user we need bin and sbin. Okay. Ah, yeah, wrong brace here. Sorry. Okay, so now we have a root file system here. Cool. And now what I will do is I will copy any everything from my busy box under install um, into rootfs. Okay, so now everything is here. And let's navigate into the rootfs. And what I will do is I will create a new symbolic link. Um, which will point to bin busybox and I will call this init here. So this is the init script which will be executed on startup or when the kernel tries to call the init function. This is what will be called. Okay, so now we have to create some, we have to create a little some um, here, some device files in the dev folder. So with make not I will create some files. So the first thing with the permission 660, I will create mem. This is a character device, my major device number one, minor one. And now of course I have to give it my password as I'm using sudo here. Okay, and I need some more files. So I need a tty s0, which, or s2, which is four and two, and then three and four. This is just because of the virtual machine, which I will be using with QMU and they need these device files here. Oh, <laughs> I want to have them in my dev folder. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, move them. Okay, so now in the dev folder, I have everything I need. And now let's create a compressed root file system. So, find everything in here, print zero, then I will use CPIO. And then I will use gzip to compress it. And the result should be stored in rootfs.cpio.gc. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me pause the video and check if I made a mistake here. Okay, it should be, let's see if this is working now. Yeah, this looks good. So now I have my root file system. And now we can fire up QMU. So QMU, system arm. The first thing we have to specify is the virtual machine we want to use. If you want to see all which are supported, I can use help here. So these are various virtual machines. 
we have some a little bit more famous in here so we have we can emulate raspberry pis here we can emulate the stm32 vl discovery board but we some arm versatile boards which we have here but i will use this word target here which is an arm virtual machine okay so let's use word here with a mine or a lowercase m i can specify the amount of memory i want to give this machine here i'm passing 256 megabyte for example then with minus kernel i can pass in the kernel which should be booting and this can be found in linux arch arm boot z image with init rd i can tell it which um yeah root file system which or which ram disk it should use which is this one here and with append i can pass in some kernel options or i can append the kernel command line and we will need root is slash dev slash mem and i will also and i will also specify here no graphic because otherwise it would open up a second window in which I would see a graphic, but I want to have the prints all here on my, on, in my terminal, so I will use no graphic here. So let's start this. We can see the Linux kernel is booting up. Our init process was started. Now here we have a shell, but we have some messages here. So let me quit from QMU by typing Control A X, and let's take a look at these error messages here. So it seems I don't need TTYS free, I need TTY free. So I have to fix the um, device files in my root file system. Yeah, so let's remove all the, I think I need sudo for this, all the TTY files in here. Okay, and now let's create new ones. And this time I need two or two. I need three and I need four. Okay, so let me try to, um, yeah, let's pack the root file system again. Okay, and now let's try out QMU a second time and hopefully this time everything should work. Okay, this is looking good. So press enter to activate console and here we are in a console. So if I type uname minus a, we can see the kernel version, which I've used. So 6.1.58 arm for 7 l So this is indeed a Linux virtual machine running arm. Cool. So. Yeah, it's working. So this is how you can use QMU to emulate an ARM bay or a Linux kernel and a root file system built for ARM. In future videos, I will show you a little bit more about QMU and my goal is to emulate a PCI card um, with QMU and write a Linux driver for it. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.